Welcome to Die Headlines. I'm Wendy Chen. Thank you for joining us. Coming up in today's show, Haiti City volunteers and Tima medical staff are organizing their first large scale free clinic to help over 600 patients. In today's feature report on the truth behind fashion, we find out how chemical additives in our clothing is impacting our ecosystem. And in Malaysia, City K recipient Mai Da Wei shows his appreciation to City by volunteering at the local recycling station. We kick off today's program in Haiti. Local volunteers have been working hard over the past six weeks to organize their first large-scale free clinic, which took place last Saturday, March 9th, at a venue provided by the Health Ministry. The event saw local medical staff lending a helping hand, as well as volunteers and team members from the United States, all coming together to serve more than 600 patients. Here at City's first large-scale free clinic in Haiti, tables, chairs and medical equipment are set up around the venue. Apart from Tima medical staff, 30 students from the University of Notre Dame de Haiti also arrived to lend a helping hand. Hi, Susie. All of the 600-plus patients coming to seek treatment received their ticket number days prior to the free clinic. Dr. Lewis Michael, the Secretary of the Ministry of Public Health and Population, is the person who made the event possible. Thanks to him, the 72-year-old senior woman will be transferred to a hospital to receive asthma treatment. And we are, we are going to, uh, to make a, an emergency. With the free clinic going smoothly, local volunteers' six weeks of planning and hard work is paying off, an effort that has left their U.S. counterparts deeply moved. There are some 30 nursing staff and 15 to 20 doctors in dental and Western medicine departments. They have all been mobilized. Treating 600 people in Haiti is very poor. There is no medical facility, not enough. So we thank, we thank Master very, very, very much. A government official also made an appearance to show his gratitude to Tsiji and was particularly moved by the medication bags the volunteers prepared. They, they don't read, so when, they give you, when you give them a prescription, sometimes they forget. The sun represents the whole day and the morning is a half sun. If the medication is to be taken at night, it is the sign of a moon and a bed is for before bedtime. The three lines of pictures on the medication bags brought by the U.S. team of medical staff represents the time to take the medicine, the amount to be taken, as well as how it is to be taken. Volunteers also ensure the free clinic forms are in French and the local dialect, and also provided medical tools to carry out health education. Dr. Chen Fuming even donated over 10 medical books and equipment to a local hospital. I hope these books and tools will help them in providing quality surgical treatment. Surrounded with the love and care of Tsiji, the future of Haitians is looking brighter than before. In Queensland of Australia, the mayor of Ipswich, Paul Pissacell, held a banquet to thank members of the state emergency service for their dedication to the community over the years. The mayor also invited Tsiji volunteers to prepare vegetarian dishes to share with the SES members. Australia City volunteers have been up since early making vegetarian dishes for the upcoming event. The mayor of Ipswich also lends a hand. <laughs> While a few Ipswich City State Emergency Service Unit members help set up the tents. Mayor Pisaseo thanks the two important elements in the aftermath of the floods, City volunteers and the emergency response units. Look, volunteers the work of the Sushi organization volunteers, Ipswich volunteers, volunteers are the heart and soul of any community. They're the heart and soul of a global community. And I can tell you, so we're pleased that the Sushi organization, their volunteers, their Blue Angels, are joining with us to make a difference. At the banquet, Sushi volunteers take the opportunity to introduce the organization to those who are not familiar with the Buddhist NGO. The table is full of dishes, and many are surprised to hear it's strictly vegetarian. Heading up to see the master, and I went through the. Um... Well, the mayor shares his personal experience with Siji and the Bamboo Coin Bank. Siji volunteers put on a display of environmental clothing from Dye Technology. At the end, everyone joins in with the volunteers in a song. 
Through these activities, Ipswich SES members get to see a different side of Tsuji. Because I had dealings with these guys two years ago with the floods, because my place got damaged, um, and it's a case of we've had a lot of support, emotional support from these guys, and um, and today I suppose it's a chance for us to sort of also say thank you to these guys. The SES and all volunteers ever wanted to say thank you, and today you said thank you, and for them that was great, and that's what they said. They'd love to have you know you come back another time. Presenting each member with a scarf made from recycled plastic bottles as a way of thanks, Tsuji volunteers hope to continue to spread their love to even more people and places. Staying in Australia but moving to New South Wales, Sydney Tsuji volunteers recently revisited residents from Wagga Wagga, which suffered severe flooding last March. Local residents were deeply moved by Tsuji's relief efforts after the disaster, all donated their bamboo coin banks to show their gratitude. In Australia, Tsuji volunteers are again visiting the residents of Wagga Wagga in New South Wales. Last year in March, residents were not familiar with Tsuji. However, upon this trip, the Love community members have towards volunteers can be seen and felt. One local resident is especially grateful. I was deeply moved today by all the stories that I heard and the work that you do. Yes. And I would love to offer some kind of way to help you when you return to Wagga, so you're not at, you're not spending your money in accommodation. Yes, thank you. I'm, I'm very, I'd be very grateful for you to allow me. In devastation they meet, but in compassion they stay. Wagga Wagga community members share stories of their experiences with Tsuji, while volunteers present tea for those in the audience. So it doesn't matter how far we are apart, nothing can stop us from coming to Wagga Wagga to say hello to everyone. Love and blessings know no distance or boundaries. Everyone holds high a hot lamp, praying together to light up all the dark corners of the world. According to statistics, Taiwan produces some 60,000 metric tons and uses up to 10,000 metric tons on nonofenol a year. Although the use of these hazardous substances poses a great and often invisible threat to ecosystems and human health, unfortunately, the use of nonofenol in the textile industry and others is completely legal. So when the factory's wastewaters containing nonofenol are discharged into our rivers, the reality is nothing can can be done. What we are witnessing is the entire Nankan River covered in foam. Additives are often added during the textile dyeing process, and because these additives serve as a surfactant, it produces a lot of foam. However, this is not what we test for when conducting water quality inspections. There are 142 dye factories in Taoyuan County, predominantly situated in the Luzhu, Dayuan and Guanyin townships. No, we only test for suspended solids, water chromaticity and transparency. Sometimes we also test for biochemical oxygen demand. Industry owners admit that industrial wastewater testing does not include the test for nonifenol. And although the use of nonifenol as an additive has been banned in Taiwan, non-ionic surfactants for industrial use include nonifenol concentrations of 80 percent. A lot contain nonifenol, but not all. However, when it comes to the legal use of nonifenol in industries, is the government turning a blind eye? An inspection carried out by the Bureau indicated that 80% of the 40 major rivers and seven water purification plants in Taiwan were tested positive for the existence of nonifenol. 
The concentration of nonethanol in rivers impacts aquatic life. For instance, it accumulates tens of thousands times more in fish rolls. A latest survey on the environmental distribution of toxic chemicals in Taiwan shows that nonethanol concentration is relatively high in Taiwan's rivers, and fish found in the Xindian Creek have four times the concentration. The Ministry of Economic Affairs is the governing authority for industries. We hope they may take some action and ensure that the wastewaters are being tested for nonethanol before being discharged. On this day, we arrive at a dyeing factory where over 100 chemical substances are being used legally. Taiwan's dyeing industries are also using azo dyes, which release cancer-causing aromatic amines into our environment. We use the azo dyes for color mixing. We only use a small amount, which is within safety standards. The owner says there is a hidden price tag behind the low cost of imported clothing. The secret lies in what is used. The cost of fixing agents used for manufacturers in China is about a tenth of the price one would pay in Taiwan. However, its fixative effect is ten times more than that. The only difference is whether it is hazardous or not. Over and above, whether it is toxic or not, the truth is that it contains many different types of chemical substance which shouldn't be ignored but dealt with. Every ton of textile production creates 200 tons of water pollution. Unless governments can take further precautionary measures, these harmful substances will continue to pollute our waters and subsequently contaminate our environment and threaten human health. As Xingpu Elementary School in New Taipei City is undergoing renovation, instead of throwing their old discs and chairs away, the principal asked city volunteers to come collect whatever that can be reused and recycled. Separating the screws, plastic and iron into individual parts is the only way these discarded chairs can be effectively recycled. Although such detail takes time and effort, the volunteers offer no complaints. That which can be recycled and used again should be clearly separated from that which should be thrown away. The volunteers even go as far as breaking down the items with a screwdriver. Regarding the volume of cast-offs that have piled up over the decades at that school, head of the school's PTA and Sichi volunteer Jian Zehong suggested a recycling approach. If the school had just called a disposal company, many recyclables would be thrown away. Trying to recycle 20 to 30 years of cast-offs is not an easy task. Thus, Tsuji mobilized over 40 volunteers and family members to come help. Working together in just one afternoon, the volunteers were able to take away half of the items from both the roof and the basement of the school. I felt a little embarrassed as only a dozen or so of the school volunteers came, and there are more than 40 city volunteers here. This recycling activity at this school has been an excellent opportunity to implement our social mission in society. Among the volunteers are also parents of the school. Joining us on this weekend to help protect the earth are several parents and their teenage children. In using their hands here today, they are not only making the school a cleaner place, but the earth as well. By recycling, instead of throwing away from teachers to students to parents, today everyone learns an important lesson on how to better care for the earth. Staying on the topic of recycling, more than 30 second graders from Zhou Zhuang Elementary School in New Taipei City visited their neighbors at the Tsuji Nangang Recycling Station for a field trip. Volunteers thoughtfully designed a game which made sorting recyclables more interesting and memorable. Today, these Zhou Zhuang Elementary School students are taking a class on environmentalism at Tsuji's Nangang Recycling Station, which is just 10 minutes walk from their school. We want our students to have some hands-on experience and to recognize the hard work Tsuji brothers and sisters have been doing. To educate students on how to sort recyclables, Tsuji volunteers thoughtfully came up with a game which makes the sorting process much more interesting. <laughs> 
Today at the Nangang Recycling Station, Dai Mother sees the chance to pass on the concepts of environmentalism to these students through stories. We want to encourage our students to bring their own water bottles and reusable utensils because they eat lunch at school. We hope that they can reduce the amount of plastic bags as they always bring breakfast to school. Whether it is in school or at the recycling station, everywhere is filled with teaching materials that can inspire students to protect our Mother Earth. Also in Taipei, two south from the Siling district, visited the Neihu recycling station, where they not only gained a better understanding of the different categories of paper, but also got some hands-on experience at recycling work. How to recycle paper? Let's have a volunteer teach us. Those with color are called color paper, and receipts are color paper too. Cutting stickers on the plastic bags. For this group of Tsi Saos, recycling is not a new idea, but how to incorporate it into practice is no easy task. One of the children said that when he purchases breakfast, he won't use plastic bags because he will prepare his own bag. I think we should encourage him and ask him to share his story with his classmates. Among the Tzu Sao is this student. Although physically challenged, he still takes this chance to practice recycling with his family. Also joining the recycling effort is Dou Chen, who is an exchange student from Beijing, China. She says she realized that sorting recyclables is not that easy. I realized that there are many categories we can sort our paper into. We are less careful about it in China and won't sort our papers like this. I find that Taiwanese people are more serious about recycling. Now with new concepts of environmentalism in mind, these students are promised to exercise the knowledge they learned here today when they return home. we meet care recipient Mai Da Wei, who was left paralyzed from waist down following a car accident. Thankfully, Tsuji took him under its wing and began providing subsidies to help Mai and his family. Having remained positive and patiently during rehabilitation, Mai is back on his feet today and can even be seen at the local recycling station, giving back for the love he received. Over the past three years, I've never given up. My only goal was to recover from my disability. Following a car accident in 2009, 62-year-old Mai Dawei was paralyzed from the waist down. However, he tried his best to recover in order to financially support his family. Following the accident, Mai sought help from various charity groups but received no response. Thankfully, Mai became the Suji Care recipient in 2011, and the volunteers' continuous care over the past two years has been a godsend for Mai. Now the volunteers still visit me once in a while and ask about my financial situation and if I can handle it. He is very persistent, very tenacious and very brave. He practices walking all by himself. Receiving Tsuji's financial aid didn't make Mai complacent. After undergoing physical therapy, Mai can walk slowly on his own now. I had to face reality for the sake of my kids and my wife. I have to show them I have the courage to face my condition and I will never give up on myself. To fulfill his promise to himself, Mai started looking for a job and even asked Tsuji to suspend the financial support to his family. In addition, he also now goes to the recycling station to help out. Wow. I will try to do recycling as much as I can, as this is the way to reciprocate Tsuji's assistance. When I help sow recyclables, I feel like I'm helping other people as well. We healthy people are more blessed. Since Mr. Mai can make devotions, why can't we? 
as Mai Dawei gradually gets back on his feet, his heart of devotion inspires all those around him. Next, we meet Wang Diwen, a police officer at the Andian Police Station in Tainan, who is also a sign language expert. In addition to his police duties, Wang was also hired as a sign language translator by the Tainan city government and often goes to Tainan Employment Service Center to help the deaf mute look for jobs. <laughs> Using sign language to break the language barrier between the deaf mute and the employment consultant is Wang Diwen, who is an active police officer at the Andian Police Station of Tainan City. When I was dealing with the case before, I met a deaf mute, and I didn't know how to communicate with him. Such an experience inspired Wang to learn sign language. Later, he realized the difficulties faced by the deaf mute in finding work. So Wang volunteered to be a sign language translator at the Tainan Employment Service Center on his days off. With my assistance, they are able to find a job, and I can feel that they are happy. Helping these friends solve their problems, I feel happy as well. Regardless of his busy and stressful policing duties, Wang is still willing to spare some time to help the needy. As he says, seeing their smile makes it all worthwhile. With the Taizong Jing Si Ho near completion and soon to open, city volunteers are busy preparing the surrounding environment and cleaning whatever needed. The owner of a construction company who went past the building every day decided to donate two tea olive trees as well as 400 plants to beautify the garden. As a large tow truck parks outside the building, the owner of a construction company, Li Ziqing, who kindly donated the olive trees to Ziji, is trimming the leaves before giving instructions on how to load these plants to its designated location. Prior to the opening of the Taizong Jing Si Ho, city volunteers busily prepare and clean the surrounding environment. Li, who went past the area each day, felt the trees can help beautify the garden and thus donated trees and plants to Ziji. Most people like the smell of tea olive trees because it has this sweet smell to it and reminds us of our family. It is normally planted around residential areas. These tea olive trees are some 70 or 80 years of age, and we are really thankful that Mr. Li, who only went past the Jin Si Ho every day, is so generous. In donating these plants, Mr. Li is also forming good affinities with all city volunteers and guests of the Jin Si the whole. Back to Malaysia at the end of today's program, at an entrepreneur seminar held to share stories of success, one guest speaker, Cho Guang Xian, spoke of how he was given the chance to continue his studies with help from charity organizations. Today, as a successful businessman, Cho is donating the proceeds of the seminar to Tsuji. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for tuning in. Goodbye.